Welcome to Fortune and Strife. I'm Robert, or Bayushi Shinichi, and I'll be your host and narrator. I am Jeannie, and I am playing Dochi Gen. I am Tyler, and I am playing Okoto Ricci. I'm Tiff, and I'm playing Kuni Yui. I am Paul, and I'm playing Shoshiro Bisho. And we will then uh, go over to uh, Kyuden Kitsune, where Doji Gen and Sueno are uh, making their way to provide an introduction uh, to the uh, castle lords and to hopefully gain access to uh, the library here at the uh, at the castle. All right. Well, I am dressed up in my bestest ceremonial kimono to to look like a proper proper doji Mm -hmm. and uh, i go up to the gates and uh, present myself ah uh, uh, we don't uh, often get uh, 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 visitors so early uh, sorry so late into the year uh, uh, when it's not uh, already uh, called upon for winter court uh, but uh, I can definitely uh, take you in to uh, meet with our uh, 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 someone to receive you if you'd like. I would be most grateful. Thank you. Guards. At, at your uh, convenience. Oh, uh, it's, uh, no, no problem at all. And uh, some of the guards bring you in to meet uh, with a uh, kind of a, uh, a receiving courtier of... Um, uh, the castellan of the of the of Kyun Kitsune here. Uh, let's go ahead and what name shall we give this uh, person? Um, um, uh, uh, Kitsune Ashitaka will be the uh, receiving courtier here. And uh, ah, uh, Doji san, it is a pleasure to have you here in our castle. I hope that the day has found you uh, well. You're here early. Of course. I did not know how long I should be expected to wait. I understand that, of course, things would be very busy in Kyuden Kitsune uh, at this time of, of the harvest. But uh, I, I bow and I present the letter I have written and say, I have come to formally request time to study in the... Uh, libraries of uh, Kuten Kitsune f- briefly. Um, there is much knowledge of the realms of Chikshudo here, and it is a, a, a matter that I've been asked to assist with investigating and, and researching. Excellent. And they will kind of uh, uh, open your letter there and, and go through it. Um, well, I would say uh, this is a bit of a, a surprise. You were not the uh, the first person this morning to come and uh, seek a uh, access to the library. Uh, really? Uh, yes, a uh, a Shoshiro Bisho has come uh, in uh, with one of our uh, a quite esteemed uh, Shugenja, uh, Kitsune Kyo, to also research uh, Chikshido and uh, uh, the... Uh, the realms. She takes a deep breath, uh, very you know, keeping keeping face, mm-hmm. and uh, and and uh, but it it just takes just that little split moment because inside she's really hurt again. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I was trying to get you in, and you're doing this around my back, and it's just. Why are you doing this to me? I'm already uh, here. Yeah, like but, Sueno uh, makes us some grumble of, of course he is. So, but uh, when she she does that, she she draws her fan from her obi and and just holds it in her hands and says, "Ah, excellent! It is lovely that he was able to." Uh, make a request using a, a special friend of his as well. But yes, we are together researching on the same uh, task as commissioned by the Temple of Anari. Uh, we supposedly are friends. 
and uh, he he kind of uh, uh, stifles a bit of a laugh and uh, uh, kind of uh, takes out his own fan to uh, to to hide his uh, amusement at uh, at all this. He says, "Ah, I think that is the uh, best way one can uh, put it when uh, speaking of a scorpion uh, that is uh, in your uh, uh, that that is a scorpion acquaintance." One does the best one can. Hmm. Um, well, then, uh, if you'll come with me and uh, yeah, Ashitaka uh, rises up and takes you over towards uh, another uh, session of the uh, of the castle through uh, different uh, corridors here to there. And soon you find yourself into uh, the presence of uh, the of of the library of the archives here at uh, Kyun Kitsune. And there you see Bisho uh, sitting, talking with a. Uh, uh, an old man uh, that you must assume is this uh, Kyo that uh, uh, that Ashitaka was speaking of. And uh, this Ashitaka uh, comes near. Ah, uh, Shoshiro-san, this is uh, uh, Doji Gensan. I believe that she is a, uh, a companion of yours. You did not tell me you would have another uh, coming to uh, uh, research with you. Bisha kind of looks, mm, I thought I did. Well, it uh, must have uh, either slipped my mind or yours, but uh, either way, uh, I figured that uh, the uh, two of you would uh, do best uh, to uh, meet with uh, uh, Yoshio uh, uh, proper, as it were. He will be the one to determine uh, whether uh, what areas uh, we will uh, uh, grant access to. He is the head archivist here at the uh, at the library. Oh, I'm fully aware of that. Again, bows to uh, uh, Ashitaka. Our, our Ashitaku, yeah. Ashitaka, mm-hmm. and uh, thank you so much for preparing this introduction. Oh, it's it's quite all right. I uh, uh, I appreciate you coming and uh, bringing you through the uh, the protocols. Uh, but uh, I think we can move things along a little quicker this way now that uh, we can get. Uh, uh, the two of you now working together. Uh, but uh, Yoshio should uh, be with you uh, uh, shortly. Uh, please, uh, if you'll uh, wait here, and if you have uh, any other requests of us at uh, Kyoto Kitsune, feel free to uh, to ask for me, and I will uh, make my way to you as soon as I can. But uh, as you say, uh, part of uh, the duties of a, a Castellan's office are uh, uh, rather busy, especially this time of year, if you'll excuse me. And Ashitaka goes and makes their uh, way back to uh, kind of uh, the the reception uh, area of the reception hall of the castle there. And uh, yeah, that is now uh, Gen, Sueno, Bisho, and Kyo uh, waiting here in kind of a a waiting room just before the library. Um, Bisho probably already has a tea or something he's requested and he's being polite and pouring... Uh, Sueno and Gen T. Right. Gen accepts it and sits mm-hmm. very, very reserved. Uh, but first, uh, but after a moment, she bows. I, I apologize. I did not introduce myself to your companion. Uh, my name is Doji Gen. Uh, I have traveled here from Kuden Doji as a friend to our mutual friends in Sparrowlands. And the, the old man uh, bows towards you. And I am uh, Kitsune Kyo. I am an old friend of Bisho's, and I thought it would be uh, helpful if I could make a direct uh, 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 introduction for him to uh, Yoshio, uh, the archivist here. I'm sure he is very grateful for your assistance. I thought it would benefit all of us. I am so grateful that you were so considerate of the needs of the rest of us. Oh, you sound so happy and grateful. We're in private right now. Kyo probably has heard a lot worse said about me. Worse? She pulls out her fan and is like waving it gently as if she's banning herself. I can't possibly imagine Bisho-san. Well, as uh, as uh, Kyo said, they are friends after all. Who else to speak uh, 
worse than of uh, uh, B show than their friends. Sueno just kind of remarks at you with a, a bit of a uh, just vicious side eye. And B show actually smiles. Well, at least Sueno can take off, well, let her hair down for a moment and speak the truth. Oh, you're unhappy with me. Ken is just fanning herself gently. This tea is delicious, isn't it? I did not know they had such fine tea in Kuten Kitsune. Uh, Kios uh, uh, nods along. Oh, it is uh, quite wonderful here in the uh, the castle. Uh, you can uh, find all manner of uh, uh, of delicious treats. It's uh, a real uh, joy for me to uh, come here when I can. Where does this tea grow? And she just like completely off the topic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> changes the topic. And is uh, chatting away uh, with Kyo. With Kyo, yeah, <laughs> and and the two of you kind of go uh, on and on about uh, tea for a while, uh, uh, about this and that. That the, this particular blend, you know, comes from uh, 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 northern crab lands, which oddly enough uh, is a great place for growing tea. Most people don't know this, and you know, Kyo goes uh, uh, goes on about uh, this for some time as you just totally ignore uh, B Show. I think Yushio, being a head archivist slash librarian, is a very organized person who likes the rules. And that's probably one thing that got between him and whatever per- persona that Bisho had. Was Bisho's uh, in any form kind of a cha- uh, like chaotic being? Yeah, um, uh, I could see that. Yeah, they they they've like they can switch their like uh face their persona, but some, certain ticks will always stay, and they will always have a high air ring and a high fire ring, which makes for an interesting person all the time. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking Yoshi is probably like if we had to just describe him as like rings, probably a super high earth ring guy. Um, and he might have some of that fire too. So he will put up with a lot, but once he gets angry or once whatever, he's no longer able to put up with it any longer, lashes out. Yeah. And probably holds on to grudges because that earth. So there you go. I like that. And, you know, he's a head archivist now. So that means he was probably working up the ranks or was a courtier for a while. And one of those sticklers for, you know, rules, regulations, and um, there's another word that I'm protocol. Yeah, protocol. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably B show 15 years ago was doing the court scene being probably to his eyes ghastly. And then there's just that one moment where. (laughs) where probably B show was flat out uh, in court flirting with someone that Yoshio super liked. It probably is married to now, but Oh, I like that. Yeah. But back then it was seen as not only a threat, but also as a um, break of protocol and decency. And right. Everyone knows she's my betrothed. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you just so like just openly flirting and just being lasciviousness? This is this is ridiculous. Yeah. Everyone knows this is not to be done. Why are you why why are you like this and why does everyone else seem to enjoy it? This is awful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it could I, like, I like not that. even be been flirting. It might have been just some like over polite niceties and the dude's mm-hmm. just like, I've had enough of this and you and your face. <laughs> I like it. All right, that that gives me enough to uh, to definitely work off with uh, Yoshio and uh, what they what they're gonna be like. So, with that, let's go ahead and uh, get back into it. Not long after uh, you guys have been waiting there, and Gen and Kyo have been deep into uh, talk of tea and uh, the from this region and that region and the particular. Uh, uh, peculiarities of uh, what it's like when it's growing in this soil or that soil. Uh, you uh, finally hear uh, 
someone uh, walking towards you and uh, Bisho, you recognize him as uh, the a much older version of uh, a man you had angered uh, close to uh, a decade and a half ago of uh, Yoshio. Uh, this person has definitely risen through the ranks. They are now an archivist and a kind of the head librarian here at Kyun Kitsune. And they are flanked by uh, two uh, attendants that seem to be some sort of uh, clerk or secretary that he is uh, dictating uh, uh, to as he's uh, coming up towards uh uh, the the group of you, uh, and he starts to uh, quiet down as uh, as he draws near and tells them to you know kind of put away their uh, 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 their 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 slates at the moment, and uh, he kind of brings himself up to his uh, kind of full height as he approaches. I am uh, Kitsune Yoshio, the head archivist here at Kuden Kitsune, and I have been told by Ashitaka that. Uh, you all wish to do some uh, uh, theological research here. Is that correct? Again, stands up as he approaches and puts on her most formal and courteous uh, position as she bows to him and says, indeed, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our request. We have indeed come to do some research on behalf of the Temple of Inari at your uh, well-renowned library. And uh, which which temple, uh, which uh, shrine to Inari is this? This is the shrine on Golden Sun Plains. And he uh, motions for one of his attendants to make a note of that. I see, I see. Uh, and the shrine keeper there is. Uh, okay. The shrine keeper is Kasuke yeah, Kenzo. Uh, ah. There, he has been for many years, as I understand it. Make a note of that. Kind of back over to one of his uh, attendants. All right then, and uh, to uh, what what fields of research are you looking to do for uh, the shrine to Inari there? Uh, she shoots just a very quick glance towards uh, Bisho and then says, it is my understanding that uh, they require research about uh, Shikshudo uh, and connections between uh, Ningendo and Shikshudo and uh, information about the relationship between Enari and Shikshudo. Of course, being the shrine to Inari. Yeah, and so uh, he uh, takes that takes that in notes, and uh, definitely has a make sure that his attendant is taking that down. And he turns uh, to Kyo, and uh, you you vouch for uh, this uh, this crane and scorpion to uh, share in our knowledge of Chikshudo and perhaps any. Kind of eyes the both of you again. Uh, portals between uh, these worlds. Kyo uh, nods uh, uh, solemnly. Uh, that I do. Uh, uh, see to it that you can provide these two with as much information on the subject as you can. I understand that there are some uh, uh, clan uh, knowledge that you would like to uh, uh, withhold from them, but uh, from whatever whatever you feel that is appropriate to share, I feel that it is uh, worthy that these two are. Uh, it is worthy for us to share with these two what we know. And Yoshio just kind of scrunches up his face a bit at that and you know, thinks about it. I shall uh, go through our uh, reserves. I will pull out information that I find is pertinent to your investigation and to your queries, and I will make it available for you tomorrow to come and uh, uh, look through. Uh, will that be? Will that suffice uh, for your uh, endeavors? 
Yeah, Bisha looks over at Ken to see if this is okay or if we need to push. Ken seems to not be sure. <laughs> uh, she bows and says, I do not know if we will find the answers we seek in that, but the beginning of knowledge is the first step along the path. Hopefully that sounded dragon enough. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And Bisha, what do you think? Um, Bisha will probably say what he thinks. He uh, bows to Yoshio uh, respectfully, of course, and says, we, if you could, and if there is time, it would be best to have the information sooner than two days. I know this is a rush and we are strangers to you with only the word of a great Shugenja, but it is imperative that we have this information. And I'm sure you think it is, but it is only on uh, Kyo's authority and uh, his wisdom and respect that I have for this, uh, uh, for the man that uh, I will tell you this, I will have the, uh, the, uh, folios, scrolls, and books on the matter pertaining to this subject are ready for you by tomorrow. There's a there's a prescribed way of doing things here, and I will not have it rushed any further than that, and I will not give you unfettered access to my library. Oh, I was not, was not asking for unfettered access, just the things you are willing to give us. I would never want to overstep my bounds. I'm sure tomorrow will be sufficient. We are grateful for your generosity. Very well. Then if there's nothing else, I shall have uh, all that uh, we have available on the subject of Chikshido and uh, uh, Inari's role therein uh, ready for you uh, to read tomorrow then. Is there any part of the library we can access today? Hmm. If you want to push on him, I would have you uh, make a check, but he is uh, pretty much ready to just say no, but I'm going to allow you to try and push on him somehow. Um, how might you try to convince him that you would like to have access now and to what, what, uh, what areas he might uh, uh, leave things open to you on? Uh, so again, do you think we should, or actually player to player, Jeannie, do you think we should p- push her luck? Um, Well, I have a gift for him that I was going to, that I am saving, okay? Right now, he hasn't, all right. Yeah, I got it. My thought is, so, so I've got, I've got a gift for him, but he hasn't Mm -hmm. needed it yet. (laughs) He's been more generous than I thought. I thought that if we could see what he gave us, right, uh, that would tell us if he's holding back. Or if uh, there's there's more, and if we need more, I'd rather push him about that point, so that we can get access to more stuff or stuff that might be forbidden, with gifts and pressure and bribes and whatever else we need, whatever else we need to do after nah, that, we have that's... an idea of the library, then try and get it done a day sooner. Because I don't, I just don't think that there's that if we keep him happy now then if we have to push him because the information isn't in what he gave us that's where i want the ammo does that make sense no that makes perfect sense and that sounds like something someone like character wise it sounds like something a crane would totally do Mm -hmm. b show on the other hand eh. um so i think uh b show gives a glance again to doji ken and uh, once again, it's that a whole, uh, should we push it? Actually, probably he takes out his fan this time so she can actually read some courtly crane language through the fan of should we push it? And she just taps her taps her um, fan against her lips to say, nope, nope, shut up. <laughs> Don't push it here. <laughs> And then Bisha says, I understand if your library is restricted and there's nothing for us to access today. Mm. 
Yes, no. Come back tomorrow and I shall have everything made available for you. Until then, enjoy your stay here in uh, uh, the lands of the fox. And with that, uh, he moves forward and uh, one of his attendants opens up the uh, doors to the library and he uh, uh, is uh, kind of now into his uh, into his domain. And he kind of takes a moment to kind of breathe it all in and uh, says, let's get to work. And then their tenant shuts the door behind them and he gets off to uh, going through his stacks. Bisha just has the saltiest like sneer on his face as he's like watching <laughs> that guy go in. Gang cocks an eyebrow. Hmm? He seems a normal archivist to me. Uh, yes, we will see. Hopefully we have enough information mm. in what he pulls. And if we if he doesn't have it in what he does pull, we may have to push harder to get into more restricted tax tests. That's why I'm not worrying about how quickly we begin. I'm more concerned about depth than speed. Well, we do have Keo here. Keo, perhaps we should talk at a tea room about maybe further of what we're looking for. So... I couldn't think of a, uh, a, a a better place to discuss such things. And he kind of uh, creakily gets up, uh, leans on his uh, cane and uh, offers the crook of his arm to uh, to, to Gen. And uh, Doji-san, perhaps we can uh, talk more about tea uh, and uh, what what flavors you might enjoy. And I'm sure we could find ourselves uh, uh, discussing uh, uh, matters such as this and what you're looking for over many a pot. Uh, um, uh, of course, though, perhaps I should leave that to, allow me to escort you to a tea house in any event, though I had promised that I would, um, make another errand today and I do not want to be forsworn in doing so. So, um, that's quite all right. You, you were, uh, a, a woman of virtue and, for that should be applauded, and this old man can can wait a little longer to enjoy another conversation with you, I'm sure. Thank you. It, it has been truly a pleasure to meet you, and she says that with great sincerity. Uh, maybe a little bit more sincerity than needed, considering the company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, you guys make your way out uh, from uh, uh, away from the uh, the library and out through... Uh, and Kitsune and into the castle town around it. And, uh, you know, uh, Kyo guides you to one of his uh, more preferred uh, tea rooms where uh, he at least convinces you to share at least uh, the first pot with him before running off on your errands uh, and to <laughs> discuss uh, what is going on. And with that, I think we'll move back over to... Uh, behind Miyuki's uh, sake works where uh, Richie and Hideki are about to square off. Oh yeah, I'm excited. All right. So uh, any words for the, uh, for the boy before you, uh, uh, you, you kind of uh, get into your stance there. Uh, before we get into the stance, uh, Richie will say, now remember, remember to focus and remember to strike. Uh, he kind of gulps down a bit focus and strike okay at which point i will then assume the stance all right so let's both go ahead and do our initiative for this uh initiative in a duel is meditation so we're gonna go ahead and all right so hideki gets two successes with a strife to add to his focus giving him an initiative of six I only rolled the one success. Uh, I did get an exploding success with a strife, but I didn't want the strife, so I left it off. So I will have a total initiative of five, one plus my four focus. All right. So uh, actually, it looks like uh, your young protege here uh, with a little bit of uh, youthful vigor and uh, energy uh, has the uh, has the initiative on you to start with. 
We'll just say I gave it to him. There you go. You, <laughs> yeah, you gave it to him because you could have looked it higher, but you decided not to, which is which is fair. All right. So uh, now that we have finished uh, initiative, now we go into the stare down. We each gain one strife because this is the first round of a duel. Will do. All right. And uh, let's see here. Um, the Hideki will go into Void Stance and will center. So as a support action, uh, while in Void Stance, you could focus your energy inward, envisioning uh, your action in your mind, uh, perfect moment to strike and whatnot. Roll the skill dice equal to your ranks in the skill. He's only got the one skill die, but still, hopefully he can reserve a good... A good, uh, a good roll here. But uh, I'm going to use his uh, advantage of quick study to take that blank and re-roll that, since you have been teaching him all that you can. Ooh. Quick study pays off with an explosion. All right. So in the end, he is going to... Oh, wait. Uh, this is... I don't know. Actually, I'm not sure if explosions work on this, uh, on, these, uh, on a, a roll like this. Let me take a look. This is a special action. Um, reserve any of those dice. Yeah, there's no real keep or anything like this. So uh, I don't think he actually explodes. So he will keep that exploding success as his uh, reserve die from the center action. That works. And that's his action. It's now your action. Okay. Focusing in, I'm going to remain in air stance to make this a little bit more difficult for him. But I think I'm going to predict his next stance. Okay, why don't you go ahead and message Yui and let her know what stance you are going to pick. Message has been sent. All right, so you have predicted. All right, we now move into round two. We each take two strife from the stare down. Oops, I put the wrong number in. Um, all right, and I have the initiative still. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you wish to bid any uh, additional strife to gain initiative? I'm good. Okay, uh, so is he. And uh, Hideki will now move into water stance. Is that, that is the one you predicted? That is not the one I predicted. Okay, so he will go into water and he will do his best to attack from here. All right, so... Uh, again, let me see here. Uh, with that center stance he did earlier, um, the next time you make a check using the chosen skill this scene, after rolling dice, you may replace any number of rolled dice with the reserve dice. Okay, so I roll normally, and then I can choose to replace with the exploding success that he got. So let's take a look and see what he can do. Uh, so uh, he goes into water stance, and he draws his boken and attempts to strike you. It all came up blank. You do have the so, one exploding and that's strike. right. Uh, but I think quick study also might come into play here. So I'm going to reroll the first two. So Hideki swings and uh, with his uh, centered uh, die, he will replace uh, the uh, success with a strife with an exploding success with strife and still only wind up with two successes and an opportunity on his uh, uh, attack roll. And he will miss you because you are in air stance. You are just able to dodge and weave out of the way of his strike. So that goes ahead and raises him to there. He will use the opportunity to reduce to strife off of himself. All right. Uh, it is now your action. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to predict once more. Ooh, okay. So do the same thing. Go ahead and message Yui. I have done so. And uh, with that, I'll also add in like just a, a few words of saying, do not hesitate, strike. All right. And uh, are you still in air stance? I'm still in air stance. Okay. Sounds good. Um, we now go into round three. We each gain three strife. And unfortunately, poor Hideki has now become compromised, which Ooh, means good. that you now uh, op he opens himself up to a finishing blow. Uh, uh, that's yeah. good because I am uh, 
I am 12 strife out of my 12 composure. <laughs> there you go. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead. And let you think your finishing blow attack. I guess we're one. We just don't have to mute Craig on this one. It's just a quick roll. Oh, boy. And I stayed in air, which I shouldn't have. All right. So how did that go with your finishing blow? I got two successes. Exactly. Hey, that's all it takes. Uh, so uh, if you succeed on a finishing blow, instead of dealing damage, the finishing blow inflicts a critical strike with severity equal to two times the deadliness of the weapon or attack action used, plus your bonus successes. Any other effects, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so no bonus successes. So you're just going to deal a uh, level six crit to Hideki here. And being that he's in the water stance and will be resisting with water, uh, we'll just may say that I brought the Boken low and just cracked him right across the thigh. Well, because Hideki is now compromised, he cannot uh, keep a dice that show uh, strife. So he takes uh, a full crit. Uh, he does use that uh, opportunity, though, to reduce to strife off of himself. Uh, which is which is helpful, but uh, yeah, that'll be uh, severity six uh, crit. Which let's go ahead and look that up. That's uh, that's not friendly. <laughs> it is definitely not not a happy fun time. Uh, that would be a debilitating gash. Uh, so he suffers a severely wounded condition uh, for that ring. Uh, and if it's razor edge, starts bleeding. So, yeah, no, uh, you bring it down across his thigh and just leave him with a nasty bruise uh, and a welt that is growing from the beginning. He drops his boken and clutches at his leg. Uh, and it's just like, I healed. I healed. Oh, 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 oh fortunes preserved me. That hurts. At which point I will not exactly calmly, but not with uh, any great expediency, just to let it linger for a little bit, grab the medicine bag and walk on over. And I will pull out a very familiar bottle and say, this is going to sting a little bit. Drink this, and I'll hand him a little bit of the sesame seed liqueur that I got from yesterday. <laughs> he takes a swig directly from the bottle and uh, uh, just, oh, uh, mm, I suppose it's better than an actual blade striking me. Indeed, if this was an actual blade, that would be a fatal wound. And he kind of gets the, the that kind of quavering, skittish shaking again. Uh, fatal? Indeed. Your life's blood is very prevalent in your legs. But uh, you also now know to defend your legs. Your body is very important, but so are how you move around. As you can now tell, this is going to stay with you for a little bit. Let this be a lesson. Thank you, Kurosama. I, I, I will do my best to learn from this what I can. At which point I will break out some of the different, like, I'm blinking on the term, un un unguents, I guess. Is yeah, the unguents, uh, uh, you know, uh, poultices, all, all, all the good stuff you keep up in that bag uh, to help with stuff like this. And some sort of bomb. Yeah, and just get it like pressed up on on that part where it's turning real dark right now. Yeah, real, all sorts of colors. And like I said, just this uh, a welt, the 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 width uh, and length of his uh, of a, of a boken across his thigh there. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's see here. What is it to treat uh, a wound like this it is a, a medicine water check. There you go. And what's the TN for severely wounded? It's a TN for medicine water check as a downtime activity. Oof. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm willing to stick around for a little bit to help out with this. One. To help out with that. All right. Because severely wounded is not fun. Severely wounded on the water ring is definitely not fun. Yeah. So uh, Miyuki will come over and kind of, uh, Help with her boy. She kind of runs her hands through his hair and uh, helps out where she can. Uh, it'll be uh, medicine is a what? Uh, is that a scholar skill? Indeed, it is. 
Let's see. Hey, she's got Scholar 1, which means she can give you skilled assistance. I will take it. Yeah. All right. So how did that medicine go with you and Miyuki take caring after her uh, poor Hideki? Thankfully, with a little bit of the assistance, I got all four successes with two strife added on. Uh, thankfully, it was a bit of a scene change between the two uh, yeah, scenes from the there duel to the treatment and, and aftermath. It's got to be a downtime action. It's a definitely scene change. So that brought me down to six strife, which this brings me back up to eight. But that is a success, and I'll bring his wound down to lightly wounded. It'll still take a, a week or two for it to clear up, but it won't linger. As it won't linger and won't won't leave him with uh, a uh, increase of three to the TN of anything to do in water. Yeah, so that leg is is bad, but it's not uh, it's not like the 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 mangled injury it was before. <laughs> Save him a limp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just it's gonna be a little tender, but uh, Hideki already starting to feel a bit better. And he's like, "Oh, oh, that's," and and he's he's now kind of seeming so seeming calm. He's actually really interested in uh, how uh, in what you're doing, what you're applying. He's asking questions about it, and he seems really like interested in what you're doing, uh, more so than like what you were trying to teach him with the blade as he's much more into this, uh, especially now seeing how it, how much it helps. <laughs> uh, you know, Richard will, will go into it a little bit. Definitely not a passion of his to talk about medicine. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's this, this, you know, particular flower. It's, you know, you grind these seeds up and it becomes this. It's, it's whatever. And he's like, oh, we know. I know those ones. I go and I, I, I collect them for uh, for my mom sometimes when she's trying to make different uh, different infusions. Well, try a little bit of it and it could work out for you as well. Just don't overdo it. I'll, I'll, I'll go out and uh, try to find some myself and see if I might be able to uh, put together something like this for myself, especially if I get hurt in the future. I'll put together a, a few of my recipes i guess and i'll get that to you before i head out just so in case you do need to make them you'll have the ingredients and you'll know how to make it fairly readily and the kid is just like beaming up at you at that oh thank you okota san i I, i'll i'll be sure to uh, copy those down myself so i can memorize them and i'll i'll keep them uh I'll, i'll keep them with me for uh forevermore thank you it is not a problem whatsoever well, at now go point, ahead and try to he, stand back up. See if you can put any kind of weight on that leg. And he's like, "Oh, it's it still hurts, but it's it's better than it was. I I couldn't really stand before." Excellent. Now it's time to learn how to duel with an injury. Uh, I am you, I'm just just messing with you. you kind of laughs along with uh, with you. <laughs> I think that's enough for one day between you two. Uh, uh, Hideki, why don't you go on upstairs and uh, lay down and try to get off that leg? Uh, I'll be sure to bring up uh, what uh, uh, Okoto uh, writes out for you so that you can study it later. Of course, and he bows deeply to you. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day today to come and instruct me. I return the bow back to him and say, just remember these lessons and you will become a formidable warrior. I'll, I'll, I don't know about that, but I'll, I'll think about it. And he limps back off inside the, uh, 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 to the house that adjoins the sake works there. Think about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's still unsure of himself. I don't think he is much uh, made out for uh, uh, being a bushi. No, I don't think so. But he has enough that he can defend himself, perhaps from bandits and the like. I hope so. You you definitely drove him a couple of hard lessons for him, but uh, I, I I think you nonetheless he he needed to. Uh, to get over some of the uh, the fearfulness that he has. Yeah, I saw that in him. It's a little concerning, but only experience will cure that kind of illness. Uh, I suppose that's true. You know, uh, so many uh, uh, young samurai grow up with uh, tales of uh, 
glorious deeds and of Bushido, uh, you know, uh, telling you uh, how to uh, how to live your life and how to ready yourself for death and uh, what what glorious uh, 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 battle can be. But uh, I, I just Hideki's never uh, been been in for that. He's always been much more interested in uh, in the arts and in uh, trade. But he's uh, we'll, we'll hopefully find a space for him here uh, somewhere uh, to serve uh, as he can. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we are a family short on short on warriors uh, to defend ourselves and. Unfortunately, that is uh, going to uh, have to lead him into a life where he's going to need to learn to defend himself and others, uh, even if it isn't his primary calling. Hopefully there are no major conflicts coming the way of the fox. I hope not. But in the meantime, uh, thank you and your friend for coming out to to help us. Is there anything I can do? Uh, prepare some sort of... Uh, uh, lunch or uh, offer you guys uh, both of you a, a drink or uh, something else I certainly would not mind a lunch Yuri-san? Oh yeah absolutely what kind of lunch are we talking? Oh I don't know what do you what do you think? Uh, the, the Hideki might need something uh, uh, that's a bit uh, more uh, fortifying than most so uh, you know I'm thinking maybe we can go and see if uh, someone has uh, caught themselves uh uh, uh, a boar recently and maybe do something with a short rib. Ooh, that is quite possible. I thought, I thought the crab might enjoy that. Uh, not everyone enjoys, uh, 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 that, but I thought that that might be something, uh, hearty enough to, uh, uh, satisfy the uh, appetites of those who are fighting and, uh, those of us who were watching. So let's, let's go see what we could find out. And, uh, so the three of you kind of go wandering about through some of the, uh, uh, the local market area and, uh, she, yeah, she finds, uh, someone who has gotten a recent, uh, uh, a successful hunt and, uh, buys up some of that. And, uh, you know, she comes back and, uh, is going to make some sort of, uh, short rib, um, uh, God, what am I trying to think of here? Uh, sukiyaki, I think, uh, for, uh, for lunch for everyone there. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I don't know, what are you and uh, Yui thinking about doing or, or, or talking about or going over uh, while Miyuki uh, prepares lunch? So uh, what do you honestly think of the young Kitsune, Richie? I'm worried. Uh, yeah. If something were to attack, he would have trouble defending himself, much less anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, Like I said, it might be enough for a bandit, maybe, maybe some animals, but it is a good thing that this is a minor clan, not actively engaged in wars. That, that doesn't matter if he has, well, do you think his confidence in his ability will change? Mine certainly did. Yeah, because an overconfident, unskilled swordsman is significantly more likely to get into trouble than the other way around. So, well, confidence is definitely not a strong point for the young man. No, but that's kind of a more safer play. Not socially, but he's less likely to run head first into a group of bandits and find himself on the pointy end of a sword. I know far too many samurai in the lion clan that have done that. And they have found their way at the end of my ministrations because of it. I know far too many crab who have found themselves overconfident and facing monstrosities. And it's something that you can't quite prepare for. And you say this, well, this clan is not at war currently. Well, there are dangers around here. After all, there are some rumors about these woods. And, well, even the reasons we're here say that maybe that's the sort of thing we should truly be worried about. 
maybe made more aware of. Unfortunately, that is not something that I can help with in that regard. I can at least tell him which way to point the blade. Then let us hope that his um, lack of courage will keep him safe, even if it's not something we should say to anyone else. Yeah, it is a true disappointment to have a lack of uh, strength in Bushido. Indeed. And, well, well, while not being overconfident can be protective, there is the other extreme where if you run instead of fight, then instead of running headfirst into a blade, your back is exposed. It is far too common to happen, and I believe that would be something more akin to what would happen with Yun Hideki. You know, Richie, remember how I mentioned before this that we should consider the late night awakening alarm? Mm-hmm. A light classic training. Perhaps we should see if his courage can be mustered in such a situation. Perhaps we should give him more of the crab version of it where it is not uh, clear exactly that it is a drill. Ooh. What are you suggesting? Hmm. Well, it has to be something that won't alarm, you know, neighbors. So, hmm. What is... So an out of game question. What is the area around this uh, this family's household? Like, is this a very crowded area, or is there like uh, like much of the Kitsune, uh, Kitsune, uh, Kitsune uh, Castle Town? It's pretty dispersed. Uh, being a sake works, they are near a uh, a tributary of uh, the river, so there's a nice uh, big creek running nearby where they get their fresh water from. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's a bit dispersed. There's not like uh, houses butting up against each other here. There's uh, definitely spaces between, uh, but there's other businesses and shops nearby with uh, houses attached to them uh, for their families. Okay, so there's a, so we won't literally be disturbing neighbors immediately if we were to say break into a window or something. No, I don't think so. Okay, so. Yui looks very like deep in thought about exactly like what kind like which which like like crab alarm can we can we pull off in this sort of limited environment? It's like, well, for starters, make sure the only weapon he has access to since make sure the weapon he has access to is not a sharp blade for this, even more so. See what can be improvised or whether or not he uh is willing to have the guts to go with a weapon he's unfamiliar with. And perhaps stage a... Uh, hmm, either we can have you go in and yell about some someone in the sake works, or just, well, you know, tell us anyone else who lives in the... Well, not maybe not... Eh. It's so hard. Well, we, who did we definitely who don't want to... for? Well, we definitely don't want to bring any sort of dishonor to him just oh, goodness, no. by by having other people interfere could be an issue exactly and i think if we get mayuki's help we can we can we can come up with something if it's just the two of them living in this area then absolutely i think so i think we could stage a fake ambush so one thing that we did back when I was training, it was a larger scale, but they always called for different styles of attack uh, upon the camps. So it was always a constant sort of, of raiding this drill, if you will. Do you think, mm-hmm. hmm, do you think a hostage situation would go well? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm, because then not only is it just fight, but it's also having to make a hard decision. Richie, that's perfect. You're brilliant. I do what I can. And this way, it is a very sudden act. It will be a 
Yeah, as you say, it will be a tough choice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he will thus have to muster up bravery and courage and come face to face with what happens when you do not have the courage to act. Because if he does not act at all, we take the hostage away. And in reality, we know there's no danger, but he won't. But he won't. Exactly. Indeed. This is, and this will hone in the lesson that we try to teach of focus in and strike without hesitation. Fantastic. Well. And with that, after a mm-hmm. bit of uh, cooking and scheming, uh, Miyuki returns with, I don't know what you two conspirators are going on about, but uh, lunch is up. So let's enjoy that now, shall we? Yes. Well, Miyuki-san, we have a proposal for you after lunch. Oh, do you now? Yes, lunch first. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm all ears. But until Indeed. Then, I did not get a chance to eat. <laughs> I did not get to eat a chance. Br- uh, let me redo that one. I did not get a chance to eat breakfast, so very much lunch. Thank you. Of course, of course. And when we're done, we'll bring some up to Hideki. But first, let's hear, uh, let's eat and then hear your plans. I am Robert, or Bayushi Shinichi, your host and narrator. Thank you once again for listening. Remember to catch new episodes every Monday. And if you want to catch them early or are looking for more bonus content, please consider becoming a supporting member of the Patreon at patreon.com slash court games. To reach out to us, email the show at fortuneandstrife at gmail.com. I'm Tiff, and I play Kuni Yui. You can also find us on the web at portgamespod.com, Facebook and Instagram under Fortune and Strife, and Twitter at L5RFNS. I am Tyler, and I've been playing Akoda Ricci. You can find me on Twitter or on Twitch as Churcher Games. I'm Paul, and I was playing Shishura B Show. If you want to follow my other projects, I am the GM of two LGBT plus podcasts, Tales of Swordfall at Swordfall D and D, for D and D Five E, and Gates of Orchid and Iris at G O I L Five R for L Five R Five E. This was Jeannie, aka Kakita Teori, and also known as, at least today, Doji Gen. If you like, you can also find me on the Court Games RPG podcast at the Winter Garden of the Kikita website, or check out The Table is Yours for fiction readings of the FFG stories. This has been Fortune and Strife, a court games production in association with the Rokugani Historical Society. 